Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step how to paint this pretty Italian scene. So uh, lately I've been looking through some old photographs of when I got to travel to Italy and I don't have one specific reference photo that I'm working from. I'm just going to make this up from my memories and how um, Italy and Italian scenery and culture makes me feel. So I'm going to try to deliver that onto uh, this canvas through a painting and a tutorial for you guys. So I'll do my best and please let me know if you enjoy this video by subscribing to my channel. It's free and leaving a comment below and giving this video a like. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I've pre-painted a 12 by 16 stretched canvas with black and white and just made different tones of gray. It's a little uneven. I like doing that um, and I don't plan where it's going to be lighter or darker. I like to kind of just let it uh, become lighter or darker wherever it, it naturally happens. That way I can look at the light, the lighter parts and the darker parts, and that'll help me decide where I wanna have my light source coming from and where I'm gonna have a little bit more contrast, shadow, and depth. So I think I'm because it's lighter over here, I'm gonna have uh, the sun and the lighter area here and maybe some water, the coastline here, maybe something kind of like the Amalfi Coast. I might take a few different ideas from different regions of Italy and put it all into one, but we'll see how this goes. Um, and if it doesn't work out, then you probably won't be seeing this video, but if you are, then it did work. So thanks for being here and joining me for this today, you guys. Let's go over the colors. I've got light blue violet, burnt sienna, diaxazine purple, neon orange, neon pink, rose, titanium white, uh, bright aqua green, turquoise, and light olive green. Now I may add a few other colors along the way and I'll be sure to add them in the list below this uh, video in the description box. And feel free to use any other colors if you don't have these ones here. I'll also have a link to the Holbein neon paints that I'm using. They're the same as Luminous. So I think I'm just gonna use uh, this number 10 filbert brush here. To start, I'm gonna get it a little bit wet and I wanna start with uh, some light over here. So I'm gonna just come in with a little bit of white and orange and make a peachy color. And I'm just gonna start adding a little bit of light right here. And I'm just gonna wiggle and scumble around. By doing this, I can create a little bit of um, clouds and more light and shadow within the sky and the clouds. I'm gently going to blend out around the lightest area where I'm going to have my sun right in there. And I'm going to try to do this without any yellow, but you could absolutely add yellow if you want it. Okay, I'm gonna go over this again. You may need to uh, add your highlights in a few layers when you're working on a darker canvas like this. So don't get frustrated and don't lose hope. It's just really part of the process of building up from a darker canvas, but it's really worth it because you get so much more depth, especially with a gray um, pre-painted canvas or primed canvas. Now I just have used, or I've just used acrylic, white and black, and some water to pre-paint or underpaint. Uh, but you can use gesso. And the canvas that I uh, originally painted on comes triple primed already from the store. Just adding a little bit more white right in here. And I may need to add a little bit more as uh, this is starting to look like a moon, which is interesting because I never planned on that, but maybe this is going to be uh, a moonscape, but we can come in with uh, a little bit of blue around and, and add a blue sky. So let this be uh, kind of a idea and lesson for you if you're wondering about painting a moonscape. There you go, a uh, gray underpainted or a gray backdrop here on a canvas under painting and just work your way up to brightest little area here, the shape that you want your moon to be. I'm not really out for a nighttime scene here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of my blue. I'm gonna take a little bit over here and I've got a little bit of that leftover peach in my brush.
Now if this really keeps insisting on looking like a landscape, then maybe that's what I'm going to just have to go with. You know, sometimes our paintings kind of just decide for us what they're going to be and which direction they want to go in. I always just kind of trust in that and go with it rather than fighting it. It seems to be easier that way. Take a little bit more of that peach color. Get a little bit of water on my brush and I'll take the peach, white, and blue. A little bit more blue. Remember that acrylic paint will dry a little bit darker, especially when you're using, because when it's wet, it just appears a little bit lighter. So if you don't want that to happen, make sure you add extra paint, extra white, if you're working on something that you want to be nice and bright. Again, I like to take this specific neon orange and this shade of blue and mix them. I like them together. Normally with orange and blue, you'd get brown, um, but just because this is such a cool um, temperature of orange, it tends to dry and make more of a purple, a very light, light, a key purple. Okay, now right away, I wanna take my turquoise and a little bit of blue. Oh, look at that together, isn't that pretty? It actually looks like it's glowing. And that's what happens when you work on a gray background. Take a little bit of white because I know it's going to dry a bit darker. A little bit of white, turquoise. And then all the gray just looks like natural shadows. And I'll just soften here right on the horizon line. And I'm going to go back to that white. A little bit of white and orange and then I can add a little bit of uh, reflections of the same color that's in the sky down below. A bit more blue. and turquoise. I'm gonna add some more blue up here. I feel it coming in and adding a little bit more color now. And I'm really just creating these little wiggly scoops. The less you fuss around trying to make your clouds look perfect, the looser you are, the better it seems to look. OK, 
Okay, a little bit more of that peach now. A few more little wiggles and squiggles. And then you can make your wiggles and your loops and scoops a little bit spaced out more and bigger as they get further up. And that will help give you instant uh, perspective in your skies. So smaller and tighter little scoops here, closer together. And then just with a bit of water on my brush, I'm gonna work out what's left in my brush here. It's gonna dry really smoky, a few shades darker than what it looks like there. And I just want to add a little bit more of that peach color down here. Now if you want to add more movement in your water, a little bit of a gentle wave, then you're going to kind of just shake a little bit with your hand and that's going to give you more movement naturally. If you just want it to be really calm, then make your lines as straight as you can. And a little bit more white. I have a feeling I'll have to come back and add even a little bit more once that's all dry. Okay, so now I'm just gonna come down here and maybe add a little bit of a slant down here on the beach. If you need these big scoops like this, you want to create um, <clears throat> a little bit of those soft waves and just the water coming up with the tide. You get that coming up here and then it pulls back. So that's why I kind of like to do a scoop and then go like that just to really soften it. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to have some more blue up here, a little bit of purple. Bit of water to help work that paint out. I love the dioxazine and light blue violet together. Create some scoops and we'll just add a little hint of this purple in here. Because the underpainting is much darker than what we're applying, it's still gonna give us that beautiful depth that we want once it's dry. So I'm not worried about covering too much of it. It'll show through, it'll come through later. You can add a little bit down here as well. spot there so I'm just gonna go over with a little bit of white and peach slide my brush back and forth pick up a little bit of that purple come right in here with it and this will give me a really light pretty lilac-y color
And that just makes such a pretty color. And then back over to the blue and purple. I'm going to go into my turquoise and a little bit of white. I'm going to pull in some light here. Okay, I'm just going to start coming in with some uh, little houses and buildings here and that's the brush stroke you can see that I'm going to just be kind of sloping down back here with and I'll take kind of a mixture of different colors here I'm going to let them kind of blend out work out some greens Just a bunch of different colors, some more burnt sienna. Make it look farther away, just make your brush strokes narrower, closer together. switch over to a size zero liner brush and I'm going to add purple and burnt sienna and just start adding some slanted roof lines and rooftops maybe some flat ones And some arches. This kind of looks like a staircase. Take a little bit of blue. Go up and over. Just think about making shapes rather than making all the details on every single house. Add a few triangles, squares. 
squares, rectangles, archways. Add some turquoise in here as well. It's really fun to play up on the colors. The Amalfi Coast, like Cinque Terre, and I'm drawing a blank. I can't remember the other names. Um, there's the three, the Cinque Terre, three small towns along the Amalfi Coast, and the houses are really colorful. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of pink, orange, and white, and I'm going to add some light lights and windows. It's much like painting those uh, night scapes that I do. I would just have all these little dots and dabs of light for the windows in the buildings. Same thing. And then you can have a little bit of reflection down here. I'm going to make some darker lines. A little bit of pink in here. Purple. small mop brushes here and I'm going to add a little bit of purple to my light olive green because there's a lot of greenery right their houses are up on mountain so I want to add little hints of this maybe the light will be hitting some of that And then I'll add little bits of white dabs in here for the houses that are higher up.
and just soften a little bit with your finger. And this will give us the vision that goes back there. Those are just a bunch of houses that are farther away, right? So you can have fun making little arch shapes around some of your windows. some little shutters. And I'm just going to add a little bit of blue in here and start having a walkway that comes down from here. I want to bring this up a little bit higher from the water. Okay, I'll add a little bit of purple. Gonna roll this out and work out my shape a little bit. a few lines in here. And maybe a little bit more of that peach. We'll have some lights right in here and maybe a few here as well. We'll just add these little circles and then just little dots that get closer together and farther away and go higher up here. Just add a little circle inside. Soften these a little bit. And then we'll switch over to 
one of my flat brushes. I've got, I could even use a smaller one. This one's a number 10. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of blue. I'm gonna add a little line here, another one here. And then down. Make this a little bit smaller. A little bit of a peach glow here. I'll add a little bit of white side of here. Just a little twist. And then I'll go into my white with my round brush. Actually, I'm going to use a little bit more of the orange. Then a little bit more purple, a little bit of burnt sienna, and right under here, and go across like this, and then create a shadow. A little bit more blue and purple. A little line on an angle like that will give us more dimension. On this one and then pull down for a shadow under there maybe a little bit of blue in there as well
And you can make your lamp posts here as ornate as you want. Take a little bit of that white and blue or just a lighter color and apply it above the darker lines. Then back to a little bit of peach. I want to do is take one of my round brushes and I'm going to take some burnt sienna, a little bit of that orange in there, and I'm going to add some pots here that I'm going to have some plants in to get a little bit more. Add some purple here so that it is dark enough and not see through. And then we'll just see the top of this one right here because it's going to be a little bit lower. A little one in here. So just a little line on the top and then a circle. And as they get farther away, they're just going to be little dabs like that.
Oh, just a little bit of purple right in here for a shadow. And a little bit right down here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take some purple and some green. See, it's kind of marbled there on the brush. We'll just add some plants inside of here. I think we're going to make that a little bit smaller so I can quickly just take this off. In fact, I'm going to use one of my small uh, filbert brushes here, or mop brushes. It's kind of like a filbert because it's round on the end. You could use a, a filbert brush. And I'm just going to take a little bit of the purple and that light green. You could use any green that you want. Kind of just like uh, the mixture I get with the green and the purple. Add a little bit more here above the houses. Okay, and then I'm going to take some of my pink and that rose. And add some flowers down in these little planters. Oops. I like it when the paint starts to dry and it gets kind of goopy and thick like this. Especially for what I'm wanting to use it for right now. I think I'm going to use a little bit of uh, some cadmium yellow, or this is primary yellow. Take a little bit, try to take a little bit. And a smaller filbert brush, number six. Take a little bit of yellow and white and apply it over top. I think that gives us just a little bit more of a soft glow. Oh, I picked a little bit up of that flower color and it landed on down here, which is kind of nice. Okay, I'll take a little bit more yellow and white. I'm going to add a little bit here. Some highlights. The light would be casting on some of these flowers.
And I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow, white. Then just kind of swipe over a little bit in some areas to capture that glow in between some of the buildings and around some of them. And that might just be a little bit too much yellow for my liking, so I'll take some white and lighten that a little bit. of this yellow and white. This one a little bit bigger. I'm gonna add some light down here reflecting on the walkway. some more color on our flowers here. Maybe a little bit of purple in there too. Give us a little bit more depth, shadows. come in with a little bit more of my purple and blue. And 
And you know, maybe I'll just add one more arch. One more archway right there. A little bit of pink, yellow, and white to make orange. Add a little bit of blue. Maybe even a little bit of turquoise right in here. With some turquoise. So what I can do with a little bit of turquoise and purple. Some little shadows there. Well, this was a lot of fun to paint. It's not what I started out uh, thinking it was uh, going to end up looking like, but that's uh, what happens when you intuitively paint and just go for it. Don't hesitate. Trust your instincts and ideas. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye!